In this video, we want to talk about the 1-2-3 scheme, which is a short and very easy to remember solution to the three indistinguishable dice puzzle, which was a problem posed by Matt Parker on the YouTube channel Stand Up Maths in April of 2016. So to shortly summarize the problem, we have three dice that we can't tell apart encased within a larger transparent die. We can roll the transparent die and with that the three dice within it, but we can't get at these dice in any sort of way. So we're stuck. We have three dice. The thing is we want to simulate a roll of two dice. Since we can't remove one of these dice, we must find a mathematical solution to this problem. And here is the one we want to present today. The one, two, three scheme. So we're dealing with a roll of three dice in a certain order, which we're calling the minimal clockwise order. And we'll explain that in a moment. And there's some, there are some neighbor distances A and B, which we will also explain in a moment. Very simple to understand. And we have a fourth value, which is just the average of the second and third values. And this is what we do. If we have a roll with exactly one unique value, in other words, three of a kind, then we use the roll three, six. You might remember that because if you roll a triple and there are six different triples that can be rolled, so a triple one, triple two, triple three, etc., then you use the roll three, six. If there are exactly two unique values in our roll, then we just use those values. And if we have exactly three unique values in our rolls, then we use value one and value V sub AB. And we'll explain now what that means and how we get that. So we have minimal clockwise order and neighbor distances. We need to understand what that means. Minimal clockwise order is just a way of putting the values into an order that makes it easy to create a two dice simulation. That is the crux of the matter here. It is the minimal clockwise order. That's the reason that this 1-2-3 scheme works as easily as it does. So let's take a look at a more exact definition of what that is. First of all, the distance between two values of a roll is the shortest path between them on the dice clock, and this is what I'm calling the dice clock. So in other words, the distance between 6 and 1 is 1 and not 5. This allows us to treat uh, rolls that might other not, otherwise not be thought of as being the same as being the same. So for example, let's say, let's take a look at just how many would say a 2, 3, 4. Everyone knows that a 2, 3, 4 is a straight, right? And 3, 4, 5 is also a straight, and 4, 5, 6 is also a straight. But you not, might not think about 5, 6, 1 as being a straight. If you do think of 5, 6, 1 as being a straight, and we can since we're looking upon these distances as being on a clock, then everything turns out to be a lot easier because you have a lot more symmetry to work with. So that being said, we can talk about minimal clockwise order. We say that a roll is in minimal clockwise order when the clockwise span between its first and last value is minimal. So this is nothing complicated. Let's say we rolled a 6 and a 1 and a 4, let's say. So we want to know what is the order of this roll. Well, if we took 6 as our first value, then the clockwise span would encompass 1, 2, 3, 4 hours of the clock, so to speak. Right? If we started on 1, then this clockwise span would be uh, 5 hours. And if we started on 4, it would only take these 3 hours. Right? So this is something very simple, just putting them as close 
as they can be put on the dice clock. Uh, there is one interesting uh, thing to talk about. What if we have this? 2, 4, and 6. Now all of these distances are an equal distance apart. So there is no unambiguous smallest clockwise span. What we do then is we use ascending order. So this roll 2, 4, 6, which would have otherwise been ambiguous, is now indeed in minimal clockwise order if we start it with 2, since that is the ascending order. And the neighbor distances that we also talked about above or that we mentioned are also something very simple. That just means the distance here, in this case between 2 and 4. So that would be a 2, and this neighbor distance would be also 2. And the neighbor distance product is just when we multiply those two together. So these are simple things. Let's look at a couple of examples, maybe. So if we rolled a 3, 3, 3, obviously the minimal clockwise order would be 3, 3, 3, since there's only one way to order that. And the neighbor distances would, of course, be 0, and the neighbor distance product as well. If we rolled a 6, 4, 4, then we need to find out what the minimal clockwise order would be. So if we have a 6, and 4, and 4, well, the smallest span would be this one, right? Because if we started here, that takes us too far afield. So we have 4, 4, 6 as our clockwise order. Let's just look at some fast examples. 5, 6, 1. 5, 6, 1. Okay, well obviously that is the smallest span. It was helpful, of course, that I started with the minimal clockwise order. Let's start maybe with the roll itself. So 2, 3, 6, let's say. 2, 3, and 6. You can see that this would be the smallest span. Let's do one last example. Let's say we have 2, 4, no, we already did that example, right? 2, 4, and 6, we said uh, they're equidistant, and that's why the ascending order is used here. So, now we have a good understanding of what all of that stuff means. Let's return to our examples. So, if we roll a 5, 5, 5, we only have one unique value, so that must be a 3, 6. If we roll a 5, 1, 1, for example, we have two unique values, so we simply use those, 5 and 1. If we roll a 6, 1, 2, then we need to take a look at these neighbor distances. Neighbor distances are 1, because the distance from 6 to 1 is 1, and 1. We multiply those together. That's our AB, and that's our index here. So we must use value 1, which is 6, and again value 1, so a double 6. If we have 4, 6, 1, and these were already in minimal clockwise order, right? So we don't need to order them. 4, 6, 1. The neighbor distances would be 2 and 1. So we multiply those and get 2. So our index must be 2. We use, in other words, value 1 and value 2. So the 4 and the 6. And for this example, we have neighbor distances of 2 and 2. We multiply those and get 4, so the index is 4. And again, 4, v4 was just defined to be the average of values 2 and 3. So the average here of 4 and 6 would be 5. So our roll is a 2, 5. So that is the 1, 2, 3 scheme. Now, a little bit to correction to the uh, correctness of the method. So we're going to be talking about some probabilities here. So we should note that there is, for example, one way of rolling a double one, two ways of rolling a one two. You could roll either a one two or a two one, right? We couldn't tell those apart. And we'll denote that with a colon and a two. The same thing here. There's one way to roll three of a kind, Three, rolls, three ways to roll uh, two of a kind, and six ways of rolling one of a kind. 
we need to know about that now because we're going to be talking about proving or at least getting a good idea that our method does indeed work that our ma map preserves the probabilities when it's simulating two dice rolls. So since there are six times as many three dice rolls as there are two dice rolls, so we have 216, 216 of these and 36 of these, then we need to send always exactly six three dice rolls to each two dice roll. So you can see here that if we were to roll, for example, a 1, 2, 3, that gets sent to the two dice roll double 1. And since this is a 6 and this is a 1, these probabilities exactly reduce and they are correct. And indeed, they are correct for this entire map. But let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, let's do this one here, let's say 3, 4, and 5. We have three unique values, values so we need to uh, look at the neighbor distances. We just multiply 1 times 1, right? Those are the neighbor distances here, and get 1. So we need to combine value 1 with, this is our index, value 1. In other words, a double 3. And indeed, for all of these, in these rows here, these are just doubles. Let's take another example. What if we roll the triple 2? Well, we only have one unique value, so that must be our 3, 6, which we can remember because a triple can be rolled with six different values. How about another example? What about 4, 4, 5? Well, we only have two unique values, 4 and a 5, so we'll use those, 4 and a 5. So that is the way that the 1, 2, 3 scheme expresses this map here, which I'm calling the dice clock map. The reason I call it the dice clock map is because of what we talked about before, about these, we're wanting to see, for example, these straights as being related, even if they go across the 6, 1 border. So the fact that we're using this clock to measure distances means that we can preserve a lot of symmetries, hence the name the dice clock map. So that is the 1, 2, 3 scheme for solving the three indistinguishable dice puzzles.